Chapter 13 Bonko Babu No one had ever seen Bonko Babu get angry. He was a teacher at the Kankurgachi Primary School. Every year, a new batch of students came to be taught, but old or new. The tradition of teasing poor Bonku Babu continued among the students. Bonku Babu did not get upset by any of this. Only sometimes he would clear his throat and say, Shame on you, children! Bonku Babu also went to the lawyer Shripati Mujumdar's house on weekends. The lawyer was an important man and liked to collect as many people around him as possible. It made him feel very important. However, even here, nearly everybody poked fun at Bonku Babu. Sometimes his umbrella or his shoes would be hidden or he would be forced to sing. On one particular day, the topic of conversation was satellites. After a few minutes of such conversation, Chandi Babu declared, You can say what you like, but I don't think we should waste our time worrying about satellites. All right, said Nidhu Babu. Of course, it is a human achievement to build a satellite. But let's talk of something else. What about a rocket? That is more important, isn't it? Chandi Babu wrinkled his nose. What good is a rocket? Of course, if one was made here and was to take off from the Maidan nearby, then we could all go and buy tickets to watch the show. Well, then that would be nice. But you're right. Ram Kanai agreed. Rockets have no meaning for us here. Bhairav Chakravarti spoke up. Suppose some creature from a different planet arrived on Earth. The others all dismissed this idea. No one would come here, and even if they did, you and I would never be able to see it. Everyone quietly sipped their tea for a few minutes. Suddenly, Bonku Babu cleared his throat and said gently, Suppose, suppose they came here? Nidhu Babu, Chandi Babu and the others all pretended to be amazed. Hey, Bankam, said something. What did you say, Bankam? What's coming and from where? Bonku Babu repeated his words, his tone still gentle. Suppose someone from a different planet came here. At this, Bhairav Chakravarti laughed loudly and said, What a thing to say! Why would a creature from another planet land here? Why not in Moscow or London or even Calcutta? Maybe aliens would come to a place like this to take away a specimen like Bonku Babu, suggested Chandi Babu. Nidhu Babu added, Indeed, Bunkum is an ideal specimen to keep in the museum or the zoo. Bonku Babu did not reply, but stood up at once. It's getting late and I have some work at home. Namaskar. Though the others tried to stop him, he insisted on leaving at once. He would not stay to be laughed at any more that night. Bonku Babu saw the strange light when he was about halfway through the bamboo grove which was a little used shortcut to his house, though he could not immediately put his finger on it. He was aware that something was unusual about that night. Suddenly he realized that he could not hear any of the sounds he normally heard at night. The sound of crickets and other insects buzzing around. Puzzled, he walked on, only to see that in a clearing near the pond, there was glowing pink light shining on every leaf and branch. As he moved forward, an object 
like a giant glass bowl turned upside down came into view. What could it be? The strange object seemed to cover the pond completely. Not even in a dream had Bonku Babu seen such a strange sight. There was also a steady humming sound all around. As he stood and stared, he noticed that the glass mound seemed to be rising and falling, exactly as one's chest moves while breathing. He stepped forward to get a better look, but suddenly felt as if an electric current passed through his body. His hands and feet seemed to be tied with an invisible rope so that he could move neither forward nor backward. Bonko Babu, standing stiffly on the same spot, suddenly noticed that the object gradually stopped breathing. The humming sound also stopped. A second later, a voice spoke, shattering the silence. It sounded human, but was extraordinarily thin. Millipi, ping, crook. Millipi, ping, crook. It said loudly.